And another issue that we see come up with the filibuster, one of the other major criticisms besides the fact that it basically allows for minority rule, one of the other major criticisms is the fact that um, the filibuster is historically heavily intertwined with racism and white supremacy. We talked about how the first time we see a big jump in the usage of the filibuster is during the civil rights era. When Southerners, Southern senators who did not want civil rights, who did not want desegregation, used the filibuster in order to prevent these legislative bills from passing. And those same Southern senators their descendants <laughs> are now using the filibuster in order to roll back women's rights, in order to roll back the rights of bi POC people, in order to roll back gay rights and trans rights. The same senators that are preventing us from getting free health care because the, the health care lobby, the medical industrial complex lobby, the pharmaceutical lobby is paying them to make sure that they don't ever allow things like a public option. There was an article in, what was it? The Atlantic called the Senate filibuster is another monument to white supremacy. It was written by David Litt. Here, here's a quote from it that I just thought was so great. Quote, there is another relic of the Jim Crow era that has thus far been largely overlooked. The Senate filibuster, the rule that allows a minority of senators to block nearly every piece of legislation, may not have the literal weight of stone or metal, but it too is a di direct legacy of segregation, and it remains a tool for maintaining systemic racism. In this moment of long overdue reckoning, it's time for the filibuster to go, end quote. Hello. Now, of course, the filibuster in and of itself is not inherently a racist thing, right? It's how it's been wielded. It's how it's been used. And like I said, it, it started being abused during the civil rights era to stop people from getting their rights. Here's another quote on the other quote on the on the one hand, the Senate helped build the America we have today, passing the bulk of the New Deal, the Marshall Plan, the interstate highway system, and plenty of other big, ambitious bills. Yet during that same time, the former Confederacy was allowed to maintain a system of autocratic, racist, one-party rule. Americans were murdered, unjustly imprisoned, denied the right to vote, and treated by their own country as subhuman, all because of the Senate's unique and often venerated pr procedure, end quote. <laughs> hey, if that's not a quote, I don't know what he is. I love how they point out that this is the workings of the former Confederacy, the Confederacy that was supposedly defeated in the Civil War. These, th these folks are still allowed to wreak havoc and terror on marginalized groups in this country, in part because of things like the filibuster. Gerrymandering, we talked about that. The Senate itself, maybe one day we'll talk about the Senate itself being a problem. And I love that he point that he points out, you know, Amer because of this system of the filibuster, Americans lost their lives, were unjustly prisoned, denied the right to vote, treated like subhuman for what they call an often venerated process, the venerated process. Remember, Joe Manchin says that, you know, this is a staple of democracy. Without it, everything's going to go to hell. It's what keeps us together, keeps us talking. Of course, the people who represent that tiny minority of, of, of people and belief, of course, they can't. No, we can't get rid of the filibuster because then how are we going to impose our minority rule? How are we going to take uh, women's rights away or prevent them from even getting rights in the first place? Quote, 
Today, the filibuster continues to hold back progress on civil rights because the chamber's two senators per state structure favored smaller population rural states, disproportionately white states, and and have have disproportionate power in the Senate. Combine this with the current 60 vote threshold for passing legislation, the filibuster, and it's not hard to see why racial justice is a far more urgent priority for Americans than it is for senators. End quote. You know, how many times have we tried to address police brutality in this country? How many times have we tried to address the disenfranchisement of black and brown voters and people in general? How many times have we tried to address the inequality of education, the inequality of, of access to jobs and resources, to real estate, redlining, right? All this fuck shit. How many times have we tried to address that? And, and, and I believe that most Americans, at least, at least a, a simple majority, of Americans do want to finally make things equitable in this country. But you have this tiny minority of senators who represents an even tinier minority of American citizens who are holding us back from having this progress. I mean, it's literally so embarrassing how in the United States we cannot deal with this race issue. It is so embarrassing. Like everywhere in the world, they're like, oh, those Americans, they're just so focused on black and white. Although, you know, you know, you know my thoughts about foreigners. OK, but they do have a point in some ways there, you know, and it's embarrassing that we haven't been able to deal with that. There was a, a quote that I heard. It was so good. It was like that the that racism is the Achilles heel of the United States. And I was like, damn, that was good. I think it was from this guy named Dinner Pancakes on TikTok. Check him out. Racism is the Achilles heel of the United States. And that's a freaking fact. And one of the reasons why we haven't been able to properly address it is because of things like the filibuster, which allows that tiny minority of senators to stop and prevent the progress of this country. They want to hold us back. Like they say, they want to make America great again. Great again. Emphasis on going in the, in the past. 